What is up, everyone? Welcome. The Dallas Cowboys 53-man roster is officially set, at least the initial version of it, and we'll get into it. We'll break it down. We will also get into some of the roster illusions that the Cowboys were able to put together because a lot of these moves are kind of fictitious moves. You know, otherwise, the Cowboys wouldn't be heading into the season with one quarterback, with no kicker, no long snapper. Uh, so, you know, a lot of crazy decisions by the Cowboys. I will give it to them. They were creative on today's roster deadline. So we will get into all of that tonight on the show. We will also get into an unpopular option that could help the Cowboys offensive line out. I will talk about it later on the show. And as we do every Tuesday, it is Tuesday, right? Yeah, it is Tuesday. Uh, we will get into the one cool thing of the week. But before we do that, let me shout out some people here in the YouTube chat, in the Facebook chat. We've got Swain. We've got Robert, uh, Stephen White, Joey Vela, Toxic Tom, as always, 7-Eleven asking for Story Jackson. Did he get cut? Spoiler alert. Yeah, he did. Uh, watching from Iowa. Shout out to Scott. Thank you for tuning in from Iowa. Um you know, I think of Iowa and I get sad. Not, not, not I'm not trying to, uh, you know, <laughs> I'm not trying to. This is not a burn, Scott. Don't worry. What I'm thinking about is the fact that we're not getting the feel of dreams game anymore in Major League Baseball. So that I found that out like two weeks after the actual bowl game. I, I recently found that out and uh, that sucked. But anyways, do me a favor. Hit the like button. Share the stream. Let's get into the show. Let's get into the roster. Toxic Tom says, my wife is from Iowa, Mo. She hurt you too. No, but I didn't mean it in a boring way. Uh, you know, uh, I got sad because of the Field of Dreams game. But anyways, let's get into the show. Here we go. Now that more of us are here, let's start things off officially. What is up, everyone, and welcome into ADC Sports Dallas Primetime. I am your host, Mauricio Rodriguez, streaming with you live every Sunday through Thursday night at 8 p.m. Central here on Dallas On Demand Sports Talk Network. With a lot more content coming your way, make sure that you check out adcsports.com slash Dallas for more Cowboys articles. And tonight on the show, presented to you by our friends over at Fumin Mazda, we will talk more about them and the ride of the week in a few moments here on the show. Tonight, we will talk all about the Cowboys' 53-man roster because it is set, at least the initial version of it. So we'll we'll break it down. We'll look at it. Uh, recently, we had put together a final roster projection. We got some things right, some things wrong, as usual. But the Cowboys played a lot of roster gymnastics on this Tuesday way more than they usually do because every NFL team is willing to manipulate its roster heavily. I am actually surprised by how much the Cowboys did it this year. I don't think I can remember any team heading into the season or at least, you know, into the deadline with one quarterback on the roster. That's usually maybe not a risk that you are willing to take, but the, but the Cowboys did that among many other risks you know, a lot of their specialists, they cut them, quote unquote, because they're likely to bring them back. Of course, they're, you know, expected to bring them back even. So let's get into it right away. And actually, the first question for me to you guys is what surprised you the most about a Cowboys 53 man roster? We'll get into this right away. Let's let's review it really quick. And you can see it on the screen with me at the same time. So at quarterback, no Cooper Rush, no Will Greer. The Cowboys cut the two of them. Will Greer needs to, uh, you know, go through waivers. Cooper Rush doesn't have to go through waivers. Uh, Ezekiel Elliott, Tony Pollard, and Rico Dowdle all at running back. The Cowboys did cut Malik Davis, which was a big question mark heading into this deadline. Malik Davis did a hell of a job, but... Ricky Dowdle does feel like he's a step, you know, 
you know, he's a little bit more advanced in his evolution as a player. So not really a surprise there. Tough to carry four running backs when you are carrying eight wide receivers. We dedicated a whole show into discussing how the Cowboys could sneak James Washington into injured reserve, which is a decision that I really like by the Cowboys. A lot of I was surprised by how controversial this was a couple of days ago on Cowboys Twitter and Cowboys social media. Uh, some people were saying that James Washington maybe was not worth the risk to let go maybe uh, Dennis Houston or maybe Noah Brown in order to get him into the initial 53-man roster and then placed him on injured reserve. But the Cowboys did it. I think that's a smart move from them. I think Washington kind of guarantees you depth deeper into the season. I think that was a no-brainer. I, ne I didn't even know it was a debate until two days ago when I tweeted out, I will die on James Washington's hill. And then I had a lot of arguments in there on Twitter. Uh, but the Cowboys kept eight of this. Of course, Washington will head into IR. Michael Gallup will be at least inactive, inactive for the first couple of weeks, if not more. So you're essentially going into game day with potentially six wide receivers active. Or maybe you get uh, even two of them inactive, right? Maybe Michael Gallup and another one. But the Cowboys are carrying eight wide receivers on this initial version. Will not be the case in a few days or even in a few hours, maybe. Uh, Dalton Schultz, Jake Ferguson, Peyton Hendershot, no Sean McKeon at tight end. In my projection, I had four tight ends on the team. The Cowboys are going with three tight ends only. Offensive tackle, not a lot of surprises there. Tyron Smith needs to be on the roster before uh, being placed on IR. And then in the inside offensive line, um, maybe the notable cuts here are Aviante Collins. Maybe it is no uh, Braylon Jones or Alec Lindstrom or an additional offensive guard slash center. So the Cowboys actually going with only nine offensive linemen. Maybe that was a little bit of a surprise. Let's see some of your answers here, though regarding the biggest surprises on this initial roster. Let's see it. Uh, that was the question. What what was uh, your biggest surprise from this roster? Oh, you're, you're, you guys are lighting the chat up. I like that. And by the way, do me a favor and hit the like button because every like puts this show in front of more Cowboys fans. So it takes you about five seconds and it really, really helps out the show. So do me a favor and do that whether you are watching on Facebook or YouTube, hit that like button. Mike says, one quarterback, no kicker. Definitely surprising. I agree with Mike. Listen, I wouldn't have been that surprised if it was only the Brad, Brad Meyer move, but the fact that they also went into the season with, no, with one quarterback, then no kicker, no long snapper. It was, it was an intense, you know, Roster manipulation session for the Cowboys. Craig says Rush will be the backup. Honestly, I agree. That was in my projection, actually. Uh, the roster is definitely not set, as Robert says. Uh, you know, of course, the initial roster is, but there are moves that need to be made. Jefferson and Davis is Craig. Swain says Josh Ball made the damn team. Not for long, maybe. Listen, listen, let me pull up the offense here really quick. We might still get a cut somewhere in here at offensive line. We might get Josh Ball getting cut. We might get, well, honestly, Josh Ball might be the only one that, that could warrant a cut. But I think the Cowboys end up bringing somebody in uh, from the outside, whether it's via a waiver claim or a free agency pickup or a trade. I, I have a very hard time believing the Cowboys don't bring somebody in. Now, I'm not saying that they necessarily bring a starting left tackle in or a starting left guard in, but they still need depth. Like the, the starting group is, is shaky as hell, but they might still bring somebody else in. No backup quarterbacks as Bruce. I noticed Sick isn't on here, says Gigi. No, 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 he is. He is. It's Elliot. The thing is that I listed him as Elliot, last name. <laughs> there you go. That might have been it. 
But yeah, six definitely on the roster for sure. That we kept three running backs, says Toxic Tom, when we struggled to even get running back two more involved in the offense, says Toxic Tom. And actually, that's why I had two running backs on my projection a couple of nights ago. I realized that it was tough for them to keep only two, but I thought that it was possible, maybe. The two quarterback cuts to 7 11. Lunatic says the front office basically repeating our losing mentality that we win our way. Really, that, that was the biggest surprise, Lunatic? <laughs> I'm kidding. But, you know, tough. Billy, what is up? We also got uh, Faith on the Facebook chat. We've got Tani asking if we kept Bell. All right, let's get, let's get into the defense, Tani. Let's, let's talk about your defense because Marquise Bell had a roster spot indeed. Here we go. Defense event. Terrell Basham. Chauncey Goldston. And, you know, some people list Goldston as a defensive tackle. I'm still listing him as a defensive end and kind of think of him as a versatile defensive lineman, which is really what he is. So whatever feels best for you, you can list him, you know, in any of those two places. He is huge, though. That that was one of my biggest takeaways from the preseason. I am very excited about Chauncey Goldston's year. Uh, but, yeah, Sam Williams, Dan Fowler, Armstrong, and Lawrence. I don't know why I went from the bottom to the top. What I did, we are improvising here. Defensive tackle, Oza, Gallimore, Quinton Vohana, Tristan Hill, and John Ridgway. No Carlos Watkins. Maybe that was one of the most notable cuts across the defensive line. I am still holding out hope that Carlos Watkins is brought back. I like Watkins. He provides versatility for these Cowboys defense as a three technique and as a one technique. In my projection, and I kind of knew that this was kind of a long shot, I said that initially Watkins would be cut and then he would be re-signed before week one. So, you know, I got the first part of it right. I'm really not sure if I will get the second part of it right. But Watkins would be one of the players that I would be looking forward to seeing if he ends up getting re-signed or not in a few days here. But anyways, for now, he is not a Dallas Cowboys. Six linebackers, no surprises there. Uh, Parsons, Cox, Leighton Van Der Esch, Gifford, Anthony Barr, Devin Harper. Some people wanted Story Jackson in there. It was a tough one. You know, it, it is a numbers game at the end of the day. It was tough to make any other cut. Somebody said in the YouTube chat, Somebody said, let me try to find it really quick. Jeffrey Miller says, Gifford is taking up a spot. I kind of figured that Luke Gifford was sort of a roster lock, considering that he did lead your team last year in special team snaps. Uh, and he, has, he, he provides a lot of value for John Fassel's unit. He led the team last year in snaps there. And I believe last a year before that, he was kind of in the top three as well, uh, if I'm not mistaken, in special team snap counts. But yeah, sometimes as, as we look at these rosters and we try to piece things together, we're never a fan of those players. I, I found that is the case, unless the guy is a special teams ace. But fans are usually not that into players that do not seem to have offensive or defensive upside, even if they're contributors to special teams, I don't mind Luke Gifford taking up his spot. I honestly don't. I mean, he has provided help in special teams, so there's that. That's the argument for Luke Gifford. I think he's very important. I, I think you cannot underestimate leading the team on special teams. Uh, but anyways, moving on to cornerback, we, we got a answer. Kelvin Joseph is still on this team. Nashawn Wright is still on this team. Deron Bland as well. Uh, Jordan Lewis, Anthony Brown, and Jordan Lewis, obviously. No CJ Goodwin, though. And CJ Goodwin is, according to multiple reports, expected to be re-signed. I wasn't sure if this was going to happen or not. I had my doubts about CJ Goodwin potentially being a surprise cut. He kind of was, but... He is expected to be brought back in a few days as well. And then safety, Kyrus Wilson, 
Hooker and Mukwamu and Bell. So I didn't include the final numbers in there, but I will give you them right now. So on offense, you've got 24 players. Wait, is this right? You've got 24 players on offense, 28 on defense, and then only one specialist. Once more here on prime time. Apologies to the special teams, guys. Uh, no graphic for them at <laughs> this time either. <laughs> I forget to take a screenshot of that portion of my Excel because in case you didn't figure that out, that's my personal Excel in which I keep track of everything going on with the Cowboys roster. But anyways, only one specialist, only Brian Anger. Brett Meyer was released, uh, you know, kind of. He will be back with the Cowboys and the same for Jake McQuaid. So the Cowboys are going heavily uh, heavy on defense while going a little bit thin on offense. This is this cannot be a surprise. I put together, I, I think, three projections this year. And in each and every one of them, you figure out that it's impossible to keep less players on defense than on offense, right? You need to keep more on defense, at least based on how this Cowboys team is built. There are just too many defensive linemen, too many uh, uh, cornerbacks and linebackers. This is a deep group in Dallas. I, I understand how Cowboys fans, you know, we always complain about the depth of the team. I get that on offense. This year, I don't think it's that acceptable to, to complain about the depth on defense because this is a very solid group of players right here. So that's where the Cowboys so far have 28. However, I am guessing there will be some changes because let's let's look at some of the players that were cut in order to get to the 53-man roster. You have CJ Goodwin, Brett Maher, Jake McQuaid, Cooper Rush, Will Greer. So one of them is poised to come back. I'm guessing we're all leaning towards Cooper Rush for the most part. So at the very least, James Washington and Tyron Smith are heading into injured reserve. That is clearly, clearly the case. So there you go. You're not having a season without a kicker. You're not having a season without a long snapper. So, you know, we hypothetically in our minds, let's place Tyron Smith and James Washington on injured reserve. And let's take care of the musts. The kicker and the long snapper are already on the team. That still leaves, you know, CJ Goodwin pending, Cooper Rush and or Will Greer pending. I would add Carlos Watkins to this list. I, I Something tells me the Cowboys want to bring him back. I think they like him quite a bit. I think Dan Quinn likes his versatility. And I wouldn't be surprised at all if Carlos Watkins is a part of this roster in week one, as we have talked before here on the show. So you could get you. I think that guys like John Ridgeway, a defensive tackle, I cannot imagine his job is entirely safe for now. Uh, the same for Nashawn Wright, the same for Kelvin Joseph, the same for Josh Ball on the offensive side of the ball. Although if Josh Ball is let go, it's probably because you're bringing somebody else in. Honestly, I think that even Rico Dowdle and Dennis Houston are not entirely safe right now. I think there are still some players. My point is there are still some of the players that we considered roster bubble players that are, you know, in danger of losing a spot because you need more than just James Washington and Tyron Smith heading to IR. Uh, some of these players are not safe yet. Jeffrey says that Gifford would be gone. Hey, maybe Gifford is also a little bit in, in a roster bubble in there. I, I don't think he is personally. But this Cowboys team is far from being set. It's less set than I expected it to be after the deadline. You know, we talk a lot about, we talk a lot about, uh, a lot of moves are yet to come, IR moves, blah, blah, blah. But the Cowboys did surprise me by letting go of every backup quarterback, letting go of three specialists <laughs> for John Fassel's unit. So Tommy915 says they're not 
candidates mo all four will be back it's just roster manipulation yeah and of course that's exactly when i say roster illusions that's what i am talking about i used the word candidates because i also wanted to include for example carlos watkins in here rush greer the two are candidates because we we don't know who the guy is right but i get tommy's point there these guys are coming back most of them I would add Carlos Watkins to this list. And sometimes we have limited information on some of the injuries. So maybe there are more players heading into IR than we realize. You know, NFL teams will stash players, even if the injuries are minor. So, yeah. Toxic Tom says, Mo, you're young. They will definitely surprise you a lot more with their incompetence and consistent disappointment. Now, Toxic, <laughs> I will tell you what, though. I will tell you what. I will tell you what. I get it. I, I have criticized the front office a lot, and I will continue to do so. I will continue to criticize them for, you know, taking intentional step backs on offense just because of money reasons, I will criticize them for not figuring out the swing tackle situation before Tyron Smith's injury and for a lot more things. The wide receiver thing, blah, blah, blah. But when I, when I am talking about them surprising them, surprising me with the roster manipulation that they put together, I actually kind of mean it in a good way. Respect to the Cowboys for, for executing that. I know that it's roster manipulation. I know that it happens in a lot of NFL teams, but I can tell you, I covered, this was an intense day. I covered four teams throughout this preseason and I covered them, you know, with, with all of these roster moves blah, and, and everything. I think, I think no one kind of did this. At least not the Bengals, the Bills, the Steelers. They didn't get rid of backup quarterbacks. They didn't get rid of uh, a kicker and a long snapper. Every team has kind of some pending stuff. But I think the Cowboys were one of the most manipulative teams in this deadline, honestly. 7-Eleven says, Mo Brian brought us on 105.3. The fans said both quarterbacks could come back on the practice squad, which is way more meaningful now than it was a few years ago because remember that you can elevate players from the practice squad the practice squad is made up of 16 players six of them can be veterans so before you all, you only had young players in there now you can get veterans in there and you can elevate this to the active roster two per week and you can only elevate each player twice before them having to go through waivers but yeah you you could you could enter week one and not have Cooper Rush in the on the roster. He could just be elevated for game day. The same for the kicker, the same for the long snapper, and then eventually just get added to the roster, of course. And chances are, if you find a way to, you know, that is definitely not ideal. But if injuries happen and you're forced to place players on IR and stuff like that, then the decisions are made for you and you have better depth to adjust by manipulating the roster like this. So those six veterans that you get on practice squad, I wouldn't blame the Cowboys for just starting the season with a lot of guys that are serious contributors, like a backup quarterback or a kicker. Anyways, let's see some of your comments here in the show. Primetime Field says, yo, Mo, let's go. Season starts soon. It does, Primetime Field. You know, it, it, we don't have too much left to go before we start talking about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers matchup. Can the Cowboys, you know, take it to the box again? And this time it's at home. Can the Cowboys survive that loaded Buccaneers defensive line? Craig says they are setting Dak up for failure. Ah, you know, I, I I don't know if it's intentional, but it does feel like that sometimes because it's it's quite amazing that they're they haven't taken any kind of drastic measures at wide receiver or offensive line when you think a lot of teams would have already done so for their top quarterbacks. 
Let's see. Uh, Robert Chuk says he played at TCU and with the New Jersey Generals. He was the MVP of the USFL. I don't know. Uh, you know, uh, Robert is giving somebody some context there on Kevontae Turpin. I don't know uh, who it was. But yeah, thank you to Robert. Let's see some more of your comments before we move on into the next topic. Chuk, uh, no. Uh, Tommy915 says, Tom, I don't think, I don't take anything Jerry says seriously. I think that's smart. I don't, I think that's smart, Tommy. Uh, I think they are overconfident in Dak, says Billy Bailey. Yeah, I don't know if it's over, I, I think it's, I don't know if it's overconfidence. It might be. Or just, you know, kind of a, a lack of self-awareness that maybe their I like my guy strategy is not correct, at least not based on what we've seen from successful teams in recent years and in today's NFL. Jeffrey Miller says, will Kellen Moore commit to the run and make in-game adjustments? Man, we talked about some of the things that the Cowboys offense could feature last night in case you, you want to check that out, Jeffrey. If you didn't, I think you, I think you did. I think you were here, though. We might see a lot more runs, honestly, which is not necessarily what I want to see, but we might. What about the Jets quarterback? I think the Cowboys do like their quarterback. So speaking of liking their guys, I think they're going to stick with their guys. Now, could they pull off a surprise move? Like Jared says here in the YouTube chat, they have something up their sleeve. There is no way you can have no backup quarterback. I mean, technically they do. It's just, he's just not on the initial roster, right? It's, it's a risk. There is some risk involved. Whether you go through waivers or not, there is some risk involved. But it also kind of goes to show you how they feel about their guys, right? Like nobody is going to, to either claim them on waivers or sign them or, or make them an offer that, that you know takes them away from from the team we'll see what happens anyways moving on speaking of those players that they could be targeting and you know i tweeted about jose borregales as a kicker i know that's not going to happen but i would like it i, I would love the cowboys targeting jose borregales who was cut by the tampa bay buccaneers and we'll probably find another team pretty soon because he was in a roster battle over there in Tampa Bay, but it was a very different roster battle than that of the Cowboys. But anyways, let's talk about one offensive lineman that became available today. And everyone was quick to dismiss this possibility. I'm not ready to do it. My question for me to you guys is Alex Leatherwood, who was the 17th overall pick in 2021 and was released one year after being drafted, by the Las Vegas Raiders, he was waived, is right now available. He's an offensive tackle that clearly failed as a rookie. Here we go. My question for me to you guys is, do you like or dislike the idea of getting Alex Leatherwood? Let me know. I get, I have an idea of, what the majority answer will be here. But I will kind of play devil's advocate for this one. While you give me your answers and before I give you mine, let me talk to you about our friends over at FreemanMazda.net because the ride of the week is the new CX-5 2.5S Premium. Last week, we talked about the CX-5. This time, though, we're taking a level up. The CX-5 2.5S Premium features an all-wheel drive, uh, Wi-Fi hotspot, Apple CarPlay slash Android Auto, Apple CarPlay slash Android Auto. That's a pretty cool feature. If you guys have not tried it, really a game changer. But here's what I like the most, the seating. It is heated. It has leather, memory, power, seating on the CX-5 2.5S Premium. Uh, miles per gallon capacity of 25 in the city. That goes up to 30 in the highway. And, you know, don't take my word for it. Go into the website, freemanmazda.net. Check out the pictures of the CX-5 2.5S Premium. Check out the interior, the seating. It's quite amazing. Freeman Mazda, 
Dotnet. Make sure you check that out. A family owned business for over 65 years. Great customer service at FreemanMazda.net. Anyways, your comments here on Leatherwood. On Leatherwood. Are, do you like or dislike the idea of getting Alex Leatherwood? Craig says, no thanks. He's not played well at all. Uh, we've got Roll Tide says Jared. So he likes it because, of course, the uh, Leatherwood played for the Crimson Tide. Like for Elias Mendoza. Joey Bella says, I like him better than Bull, which is kind of the correct mindset to have right now, honestly. Just for Adrian Padilla, no for Anthony, no says Charlene Evans. Kill the Cowboys, idiots says he's trash. Uh, let's see, like more than ball for Bruce got the use. Kai says make him a backup or guard. 7-Eleven in most years, yes, but we have too many projects at offensive line already. No thanks. Dislike says Toxic Tom. What we got to lose is Dallas Cowboys 92. All right. Most uh no, we've got uh ball is trash, like for Alex Flores. Nope, says Billy Bailey. Big fat nope. What is up, Mark Rubin? Thank you for being here in the show. Thank you for tuning in. All right, let's do this. Let's look, let's do this. I would take a look at Alex Leatherwood. I'm not going to say that the Cowboys should get this guy, they should sign him unquestionably. But let's be real. Reality check for the Cowboys offensive line. Like I said last night, honestly, mediocre until proven otherwise. Question marks at center, question marks at left guard, left tackle. And I will say even at right tackle, especially considering how much how much more there will be in steals plate this year. And we talked more about that in detail last night. There are, this is not a unit you can feel confident about. And I am talking about the starting five and the backups. The Cowboys need the depth. Now, Alex Leatherwood did not look good for the Raiders. That There's no denying that. You can also kind of not deny the fact that he played a position that a lot of people didn't see him playing in the NFL in the first place. He was asked to play tackle. Dame Brugler, the athletics draft analyst, in, in, and in my opinion, the face of NFL draft coverage, had a first slash second round grade on Alex Leatherwood. And he projected him as a guard. And this is the actual quote from Brugler's draft guide. He said, overall, Leatherwood has a physical makeup to survive on the edges, but his long-term future might be better suited at guard. Offering the position flexibility and steady temperament to be a day one NFL starter. And you look at some of the traits from Alex Leatherwood, and this makes sense right away. Uh, he does have somewhat of the physical makeup to survive, but his arm length, for example, he's under, his arms are under 34 inches, and that ranks his, his specific arm length. Might have been a little bit impacted by that too. He maybe was not worthy of a 17th overall pick, but not being worthy of a top 20 pick does not mean you are not worth a claim on the waiver wire. Now I've watched Alex Leatherwood played. He didn't fare well, but I do wonder if he is a worthy shot and, and he doesn't even have to play tackle for the Cowboys. He doesn't even have to start at a guard or a tackle or whatever. He can be a backup. Is he undeniably worse than Josh Ball? I think he isn't. And is he undeniably worse than, than Connor McGovern at left the guard? That's an answer that we don't have because we have not seen Leatherwood at guard yet in the NFL, at least not for an extended period of time. I would like to figure it out. Are you confident in McGovern after he was benched day, uh, games after getting the keys to the starting job? 
I am definitely not. So I would be all for um, bringing in some competition. He is far from my preferred choice, though. I will tell you that right now. I would like Daryl Williams first. I would like Isaiah Wynn from the Patriots if they could trade for him. I would like signing Eric Fisher or even Jason Peters at left tackle and just stick with Tyler at left guard. There are a lot of other possibilities that I would like, but I cannot look at this Cowboys unit and feel immediately disgusted by Alex Leatherwood. He has the tools. He does have tools that can be developed, and he would be far from the first player to turn things around. Now, didn't work out with the Raiders. They're going to eat an $8 million cap hit just for Leatherwood not to be on the team. They tried trading him to every team. Every team said no. Not a surprise, though, because of the contract. I don't know. I think that we just don't know enough about Alex Leatherwood to immediately deny it. Right? Damon Davis says Alex Leatherwood wasn't a first rounder for no reason. Surprise, the Raiders are shopping him, says Damon. Yeah, because it's not like it's not like uh the Raiders drafted a guy nobody knew about. There were disagreements about Leatherwood, but a lot of people saw him as a first rounder or a second rounder. So it's not like only the Raiders were high on, on Leatherwood. They did play him, according to many, in the wrong position, including Dane Brugler. Dane Brugler had the best projection for him as a guard. He did play right guard and left tackle when he was in Bama. I would look at him. I would definitely look at him. Uh, Tony Simmons says, can Philbin coach him up is the question. You know, Philbin hasn't done great in the development phase of things, at least in Dallas. The Cowboys do have Duke. I don't know how involved Duke is during the season, though. Uh, I really don't know. He was drafted just one year ago, says Tommy915. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, free cap space. Stephen is on the phone right now. Probably says Bruce got the toxic use. There you go. We, John Ross, is coming back. It's a G2H movement. John Ross. Man, John Ross was a fun player coming out of college. Philbin and Kellen are trash, says Jeffrey Miller. <laughs> Philbin has not done great, honestly. Ryan Doyle says, I think at this point there is nothing significantly better out there. And yet you still need depth. Like, I think the Cowboys are bringing somebody in, even if it's not as a starter. But I think this, this Cowboys offensive line group is not done. This is what it looks like right now. Five offensive linemen on the team. I would assume somebody else is, is getting signed or traded for. Matt Farniak is your swing guard, technically. Matt Farniak is your swing guard and your backup center. And an offensive tackle, you've got Josh Ball and Matt Well, let's go Now, I have no, no problem with Well, let's go I think that he's what we thought he was when they drafted him, a de developmental player. But I don't like the idea of him being the swing tackle either. Like assuming it's not, assuming it's not uh, Josh Ball, I am also not confident in, in, in well, let's go either, right? I don't think anyone is, to be honest. But anyways, looking at some of your comments here really quick. The coaches in Jerry obviously feel like we don't need another quarterback, says GG. Oh, they're, they're having somebody. They're having somebody. Damon says, our offensive line coach can coach Leatherwood up. Trust me, second chance for him will go far. I also cannot tell you that I am super confident in signing Alex Leatherwood, but I would like it. I, I would like them rolling the dice with him definitely 
Let's see. The Facebook chat, I'm trying to figure out the Facebook chat because there is a fight going on. So last night or, or, or two nights ago, we had <laughs> we had a a fight on the YouTube chat. Now we're getting another one on the Facebook chat. Come on, we're all on the same page here. We are all on the same page on the same team too. So we don't have to fight. <laughs> but but it, it it becomes funny, honestly. Let's see. Tom and I one five says I think that they gave up on him too quick. It's one thing to give up on a fourth rounder, but to give up on a first on a first after one year is crazy. Yeah, and even with a different regime, which is the case for the Raiders, that was a big time surprise. Uh, what else do we have here? They played him. Uh, he was a guard. I thought the Raiders had him at guard, so they did for a while. Most of the season, he did play at guard, but he also got some time at, at tackle, like about two-thirds, I believe, of, of the 2021 season Leatherwood spent at tackle. I would like to see him as a guard, honestly. <laughs> Anyways, as every Tuesday, though, we do have the One Cool Thing segment. For those of you who are new on the show, this is where you – literally share your one cool thing of the week it can be something personal uh professional sports related non-sports related whatever you want it to be let me know what is your one cool thing of the week and then we will get out of here on adc sports dallas prime time remember that we are live every sunday through thursday night at 8 p.m central uh make sure you hit the like button share the stream if you're watching on facebook youtube or twitter let your friends know about prime time. But first, let me know what is your one cool thing of the week. <laughs> Toxic says, Facebook crowd getting rowdy. See what I did there? Uh, Tom and I want five. Congratulations. He says, my grandson is here. There you go. Shout out to Tommy. I bet he's enjoying, you know, his grandson. Let's see. My granddaughter, says Gilbert. Madison Nicole turned eight years old. Congratulations to Madison Nicole. Happy birthday. Um, my one cool thing is Bell made the team. I'm excited about Marquise. I really am. Oh, I, I don't know if we will get to see a lot from him just because I don't know if Jaron Kears will give him the opportunity to do so. Hawaii winning the Little League World Series was pretty cool. It was, Burl. It was, but I have not gotten over Mexico's loss to Taiwan late in the late in the turn in the international tournament. The remodel is here. So Robert Chuk, congratulations there as well. Uh, Ir a regresar Isaac Alarcón says Victor. Isaac is going to make the practice squad. Isaac is going to be in the practice squad. And then hopefully 2023 is the year. And in 2023, he will not have the roster exemption anymore. Let's see. 7-Eleven. My fantasy draft is this Saturday at a local authentic Mexican food restaurant. Two cool things of the week. There you go. 47 fantasy drafts this weekend to Toxic. <laughs> there you go. My one cool thing is that after week zero, we are getting week one of college football. So college football is entirely back. We've got the fighting Irish scoring off against Georgia. We've got uh, even smaller games like Pittsburgh, West Virginia on Thursday is one that I am looking forward to watching. We've got legit games. Clemson, my team, fighting Georgia Tech next Monday night, though. That, that will be a, a, you know, technically next week. But that's definitely my one cool thing. I noted them, Ohio State. Sorry, I said Georgia. My bad. Uh, Judah versus Florida. That's also going to be a fun game. I've got the fighting Utes, honestly. I've got the Utes, not the fighting Utes. Don't worry. Uh, Rise USC, that's not going to be fun though, but I am looking forward to figuring out how USC looks after all of the transfers. So yeah, I'm excited about college football being back. I have 33 next week, says Robert Chuk. I have one fantasy draft. I have only one fantasy draft scheduled. I am proud of myself. Mike says, I put $5 on Dallas to score first and I will win $500. That's not right, is it? 
Mike, where did you bet this? Dallas to score first, what? Like in the game, within that game? Wait, that's that that there's something wrong with that. There has to be, right? Where do you get those odds? In the game, says Mike. Wait, is that like a promo or what? Are you sure it's in the game, Mike? That's a weird bet. That has to be a promo. There's, there's no way you're betting Cowboys to score first and you're getting those odds. That's crazy. I, I, I am legitimately curious about this because that, that seems like an arbitrage opportunity, to be honest. You don't get those odds anywhere else. You're putting your money in Kellen Morris' toxic tone. No, that's, that's a heck of a bet. That is a heck of a bet. We have local bets in my city. What is the is the sports book? Is the odds maker crazy in there or what? <laughs> I am I am blown away by that. Of course, I split the pot three ways. This is Mike. Bro, I am blown away by that. Like if, if you try it, yeah, that's that is 100 to 1 odds. This is Jason Renfro. All right, all right, we'll get out of here. I will probably not be able to sleep just because I'm trying to figure out what, what's going to... Yeah, I'm calling my bookie after the show. It says Toxic Tom. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> what is this trash odds that, you know, out there in out there where, where my guy Mike lives, he's getting 100 to 1 odds on this bet. How come you're giving me, you know, less than 1 to 1 odds, honestly, because that, that might be the odds in most sports books anyways ladies and gentlemen thank you for tuning in do me a favor and hit the like button share the stream it takes you one second to hit the like and it helps out a lot i will see you tomorrow night 8 p.m central have a fantastic monday night let's enjoy some yankees versus angels baseball and i will see you tomorrow bye bye adios hasta mañana